Hey gang, welcome back to uh, the big board and course on Pocket 2. Actually got it out this time, the little Stalingrad on the Nepper. Uh, interesting times. We are uh, digging in, continuing the gameplay. I took a couple of days off from this just to sort of clear my head and I've been playing some other bits and pieces uh, on Vassal uh, since uh, I, I'm, I have limited space and we can talk about those things at some other time. But I thought I'd give you an update because I haven't done a video for a little while on uh, on this game. So it's time for a you know, quick chat. Now, let's uh, we'll zoom in in here in a second. We'll get, get uh, a little bit of uh, detail going. The weather on the 6th is the, at the period of time that things turn to deep mud. Uh, it started out uh, on, let's see, the fifth was mud for the three turns. So the frozen, uh, the frozen terrain for the two prior turns, the third and the fourth, which, cons which actually consist of three turns, right? So uh, there's an AM, PM and night turns, which is why on the, uh, on the fourth, I actually ran an extra turn. I did the extra night turn on the fourth try and get a little bit of uh, extra progress going before the mud kicked in. And I think that was helpful. It, it put a lot of guys into tired or exhausted mode. We managed to move them off the line and let them recover without uh, too much drama. They didn't achieve as much as I hoped they would. I really wanted to try and break through during a, during a frozen turn, but that really just is not conceivable. I don't think it's possible to be done. Uh, uh, you know what, and I'm looking here and I don't believe I can advance those guys across the river there, uh, not advance or move, but because I'm going to have to, I think I have to attack that uh, that heck. So we're not going to do that. I'm just going to pull those guys back right now. Uh, so anyway, so the mud started on the 5th, then on the 6th we had deep mud and that's when uh, it washes out all the roads that I had built. Now I've left the roads in because I don't want to have to put the markers down again. Uh, just to keep things simple. Uh, so uh, we know that there's limited supply and I've got limited supply markers off on the left-hand side over there for these guys who are under limited supply. I dropped supply last turn, the 6 a.m. turn, I dropped supply. We were in limited supply for these guys for, the, for that phase. We then go into the 6 p.m. turn, the supplies are available. They can supply 15 units each. So I had two down that covered 30 units. That allows us to, because we're in supply, we can use our artillery and use full strength. It's really very limited issues with being in limited supply. I really thought it was gonna be more onerous. Uh, so no, hopefully I haven't missed anything there. Now the key thing here is, if you remember, we wanted to get a a bridgehead across in supply and uh, and defensible because we've got a significant now uh, number of reinforcements coming onto the map and there's even more I've got uh, more of these guys here coming on the 7th and the 6th p.m. turn has got uh, some stuff coming as well so it's got to be it's got to be defensible over here and and be held and I've got to be able to keep a supply line, the bridgehead has to be in supply as well. Now what I've done uh, to sort of facilitate that is because we're, <clears throat> you know, we're forecasting, right? We're, we're talking to our meteorologist, we're looking at the weather, it's the 6th, we're looking out two or three days, by the end of the 9th, uh, the weather drops back to mud on uh, the 8th and the 9th. But mud does not remove the roads or construction only deep mud does. So this deep mud is going to end, uh, in fact, tonight uh, on 6th at the night turn, we'll go back to frozen, and it'll be frozen on the 6th and the 7th in the morning, and then back to mud, and then there's a couple of frozen night turns. And so the weather kind of bounces around a little bit like that, but it allows me to keep my road I've constructed and the bridges that I've laid across these uh, streams and rivers and things here, to uh, allow me to link up to roads that then lead back to a supply source, right? So that is gonna keep the Germans basically in supply. And I've got this, this linking here 
and then it comes, it comes across here and goes down here. It's a bit of a wonky trail, but I basically had to connect these guys back to this section here, across here to this road, and we're keeping we're keeping the uh, the forces in supply that way. That's that's my game plan for them anyway. Over here with the 34th and the 198th, I've, I've had to I've been juggling forces around a fair bit, and in some cases I've missed benefits from having uh, regimental bonuses. But we were looking to try and get forces across the river. We've managed to do that here. We we popped across here. We're building a we we're building a pontoon bridge here. <coughs> We've now captured this bridge, but it's down. Uh, oh, it's here somewhere. The marker. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's a construction marker, but I, it's a broken bridge there. The, the Soviets destroyed it once they realized they were going to lose the situation there. But after the attack, these guys advanced. <coughs> we dismounted these these uh, mechanized infantry here. I'm not going to pick that up. And they were getting ready to cross as well, but I've decided that I will not do that. Uh, no need to once we were successful with that combat. And now these two, these guys here are either going to have to fight or he'll have to disengage, right? So uh, they're the losses from the turn. So it was pretty pretty significant success. It's taken <clears throat> four turns of combat at three to one, two to one. I got one four to one attack in there. I think I used some air finally because there was no fog uh, or less fog. And uh, it, it's just been highly attritional right across the line. Soviets had to stay to try and delay this success here Otherwise, uh, there was going to be too much force across the river and, and there's no way that these reinforcements will be able to punch these guys back in the face and knock them out. Now, that's, that's one option they have. The other option the Soviets have, of course, is to, if we come over here, we could certainly come and attack anywhere along this line here, looking for an opportunity to cut the supply line that I was talking about. Now that I'm looking at the situation and the scenario, what I would probably have preferred uh, is to have, you know, if I was the Soviet commander, rather than bringing forces in from this direction, it'd be much easier given the situation as it's evolved on this side of the river to come from this angle right here and punch in this way and break this supply line up and then it'd be Everyone here would be in limited supply. There would no, be no uh, in-supply bridgehead and there would be no success for the Germans. Uh, I can probably guess where this is going to end up, even though we have a good, what, three, six, nine. We've got nine or ten turns left. It's going to take several turns for these guys to get to where they need to be to start fighting and consolidate and prep and, you know, get ready for the, get up to their line of departure and attack. So it's gonna be a hard slog for the Soviet player to secure a victory or prevent a German victory. Now, that's not to say that we have not, uh, that we've played this 100% correctly. It's our first time playing. I really put a lot of thought into how I was gonna tackle this and did the reading on where the, where the Germans uh, originally attacked and where the counterattacks came from. Uh, and I didn't think that the, the advance they made was a pretty broad advance. I narrowed my advance uh, up pretty tightly. It really, really was this section of the river here, and I, initially I was focused here. And then once, once the Germans kind of, once the Soviets kind of doubled down and put a lot of forces here, I then started to spread out and, uh, and thin the line, right? Uh, tried to find a flanking opportunity, which, you know, we got very close to... Uh, crossing over here and being successful, but uh, to no avail. And uh, we're, you know, we could, we could push this way. We could completely pivot and move uh, the, some of the elements of 16th Panzer 
and the third panzer sort of support units we and maybe even some of the first panzer which are sitting here ready to go ready to launch across the river we could rush over this way if it wasn't so muddy uh, i think that's a bit of a forlorn hope particularly given that we've got these these uh hefty uh, soviet reinforcements coming there are some really big units these are the kind of the middleweight guys although here's some decent guys from third tank corps probably can't see that but that's a that's a 10 10 unit that's one of the strongest units on the board at the moment uh that's gonna that's gonna ruin your day all right i'm gonna let you go just wanted to give a quick little update we'll talk soon uh hang in there and roll some dice